Innovation Workshop Harnessing the Sun is a production of the Fairfax Network in conjunction with the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum with a generous grant from the Gertrude E. Skelly Charitable Foundation. Astronomers estimate that there are more than 100 billion galaxies in the observable universe. Our sun is just one of about 300 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy, and yet it keeps all the planets in our solar system in orbit through the force of gravity. Our sun provides life-sustaining energy to our planet and all the living things on Earth. How can we study and understand the sun when it's too bright to look at directly and so far away it would take nearly 200 years to drive there by car? How does the sun's energy become a source that we can use to power our everyday lives and to power exploration? What technologies allow us to efficiently harness the sun's energy? What innovations are next? Hello, and welcome to a place for new ways of thinking and doing. This is Innovation Workshop, Harnessing the Sun. I'm Kyle McGrother. And I'm Brittany Mart. We are at the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum to focus on the sun, its energy, and its many uses. We're standing in front of Skylab, America's first space station. Quite an amazing example of innovation. We'll learn more about it later. <laughs> See, energy is all around us. It comes from different sources and can be observed in different forms. Energy is universally used to do some form of work. Our ability to harness the sun's radiant energy makes it possible to power space stations for humans to explore and study the universe. Or to develop airplanes that can fly without a single drop of fuel. And to build homes that can power lights, computers, and even TVs with renewable energy. Innovative technologies have been created to capture the sun's energy and change it into another form of energy to be useful. Most of us just plug our cell phone into an electrical outlet. What if you only had sunlight to charge your cell phone? What innovations would be helpful? Charging your phone is vital to stay connected. If you switch on a light, you expect it to work. Our modern society relies on a constant and reliable flow of electricity to communicate and meet our needs. But where exactly does that electricity come from? What energy sources are used to generate electricity? Most Americans don't know that their energy is a mix. Like, depending on where you live in this country, you might have more percentage of energy from coal, or more from hydroelectric, or more from nuclear. And that you're never one full source. And that we have a mixture of energy, and because of our particular region, our particular mixture, we might have a different uh, carbon footprint because of those things. So, um, you know, when I'm plugging in all my devices, my laptop and my cell phone and playing my PlayStation, they have different, um, they, they have an energy consequence. Energy sources used to generate electricity that come from fossil fuels, like coal, oil, and natural gas, are non-renewable. They take millions of years to form, so we can't just create more. To get fossil fuels out of the earth, we spend a lot of time, effort, and money. Then, once we have that fossil fuel, we have to burn it to capture its energy and transform it into another more useful form of energy, like electricity. This process adds greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and other gases into the environment. It's a long process to harness the stored energy. It's also very important to look at ways to reduce carbon emissions because of the implication of having uh, ever-rising levels of carbon emissions will impact our climate. Over many decades and hundreds of years, what we've seen since the Industrial Revolution in the scientific record is that we're adding carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and that's highly correlated with uh, ever-rising global temperatures. Renewable sources for energy can easily be replenished. Their supply is limitless and always present. The sun is going to be there tomorrow, so we can't use it all up. Plus, renewable resources are considered to create clean energy. That means it's environmentally friendly and produces little or no emissions. Solar is a renewable energy, and it's an amazing resource that shines every day. We have enough solar energy strikes the Earth in one day to power the entire planet for a year. That's if we could capture it all. We can't. But in the United States, if we just covered 0.6, less than 1%, of our land mass with solar panels, we could power all of our electrical needs. And that's pretty amazing when you think about it. Photovoltaics convert radiant energy from the sun directly into electricity. 
You've probably seen solar panels on the roofs of buildings in your neighborhood or even at your school. Photovoltaics were first developed in 1954 when the first solar cell was built by Bell Labs. Although this innovation was cutting edge at the time, it only produced 50 watts of electricity per square yard. That's just enough to power your alarm clock. NASA quickly discovered the useful benefits of this new technology. After all, satellites orbiting the Earth can't exactly plug into an outlet to charge, so using photovoltaic panels to power spacecraft quickly became the standard. Creating more efficient and cost-effective photovoltaic cells was the next challenge. In today's market, homeowners can lease or buy photovoltaic panels to power their homes. Although solar energy is clean and renewable, it accounted for only 10% of the electricity generated in 2013 in the United States. The Sunshine Initiative's uh, goal is to make solar energy to be cost competitive with any form of conventional form of energy generation. We believe that in order for any technology to be widely adopted, it has to move beyond the early adopters, the people who want to choose solar because it's the green thing to do, the environmental thing to do, but it becomes an economic choice uh, because people can actually save money by choosing solar to power their homes and businesses. Well today, there's a lot of sunshine today, so we're actually producing more than we're using. It's going back into the grid, so my neighbors are using it. So the refrigerator is running on solar right now. Everything that's electrical in the house right now is running on solar. So now imagine if you could put 220,000 photovoltaic panels together. This solar farm produces enough electricity to power a university and 1,700 homes in the area. The most beneficial part of a solar farm is the density of power in one location. Uh, it's much more cost effective to, to build the facility in one location versus numerous locations. And the operation and maintenance of the facility as well are less expensive to operate. Yeah, our customers uh, are constantly looking for ways to, to save energy costs at their facility, whether it be a school, government building, local business. And we get requests all the time to determine whether solar is the right choice for them. But just how does a photovoltaic panel really work? It's not moving and it looks like it's doing nothing. But there's something more complex going on inside. The sunlight comes in and hits the surface of the solar cell. And we think of sunlight as being composed of little particles we call photons. These photons come in and what do they do? Well, they interact with the electrons that are there. And they do so in such a way that the photon is actually absorbed by the electron. In the process of doing so, the photon essentially disappears. It no longer exists. We call it absorption process. When the electron absorbs the photon, it then has a lot more energy than it had before because it's, it's sort of inherited the energy that was in the photon. That electron then is free to break loose from its chemical bonds and can wander around freely within the material. The challenge then is to somehow get it to wander to the electrical contact where you want it to come out and do useful work on the outside world rather before it wanders around and just goes back to where it came from. Lines here, which are called bus bars, collecting all the energy from the cell. They jump up into the circuitry. As you can see here, the circuit goes all the way around the panel, collecting each one of these cells energy into this circuitry. All this circuitry then jumps into what is called a junction box on the back of the modules. And that junction box gathers all the different cells' power and the set of wires all plugged together, just like your Christmas lights. And that's how easy photovoltaics is to hook up. 